Lesson 9. Cornelius, the first Gentile convert. Lesson 9. Cornelius, the first Gentile convert. God is no respecter of persons. Reading Acts 10. Objective. To show how God called the first Gentile to the gospel by which we can have confidence that God is calling us to. Background. For generations, Israel had thought that they were a superior nation. Jews considered themselves purer than the defiled Gentiles. But Jesus was declared at his birth to be a light to lighten the Gentiles. Luke 2 verse 32 and see also Isaiah 49, verse 6. God had called the Samaritans who had some link with the Jews and their religion. Then came a Jewish proselyte, an Ethiopian eunuch. Last of all came the greatest challenge, to baptise an uncircumcised Roman. For Peter, this would be a real test. Cornelius the Roman centurion. Acts 10 verse 1 to 8. Cornelius was a centurion, or captain of a hundred men, and belonged to a company of soldiers called the Italian Band, one of the more privileged bands of the powerful Roman army. He lived in Caesarea, the army's headquarters in Palestine, the hometown of Philip. Despite his occupation and his strong Roman background, Cornelius had some wonderful characteristics. He was a devout man, a man who feared God, see verse 2 and verse 22. He feared God so much that his whole house was affected. Verse 2. Generous to the people in verse 2 and verse 4. Continually in prayer, in chapter 10, verse 2, verse 22, and verse 35. Was a sincere and religious man, one with whom God was able to work. God would answer his prayers. It would be easy to suppose that by good deeds such as these, a man would surely be rewarded by God with a place in the kingdom. But it is not so. Cornelius needed to fully understand the gospel and to learn about Jesus Christ, the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. In Acts 4 verse 12. At three o'clock one afternoon as he was praying, Cornelius saw a vision. An angel told him that his prayers and righteous acts has risen to God as an acceptable offering. Cornelius was instructed to send messengers to Joppa to fetch Simon Peter at the house of Simon the tanner. Peter shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. In chapter 11 verse 14. With these brief instructions, the angel departed. Cornelius realised how important this was, so he gave instructions to two of his household servants and a devout soldier, who normally was one of his constant attendants, to go to Joppa. Peter's Vision Acts 10 verse 9 to 17 Next day at noon, Peter went up to the housetop to pray as was the custom of the Jews. Waiting for the midday meal to be prepared, Peter fell into a trance, a state like hypnotism. He saw in a vision heaven opened and a huge sheet being lowered down by its four corners. It was full of all kinds of animals, reptiles and birds, obviously unclean under the law of Moses. See Leviticus 11 for details. Then a voice commanded him, 
Arise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter was horrified at the idea. He objected strongly. Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Common means unholy. The voice then addressed him again, saying, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. Three times the voice commanded him to eat. Three times Peter refused. Although he was hungry, Peter did not forget the habits of his training. He had never eaten forbidden meats. See Deuteronomy 14, verse 7 to 8. He was not prepared to be so defiled, even though God commanded him. Suddenly the sheet and its contents was taken up into the sky. What could a commandment that directly contradicted the law of Moses mean? Peter was to soon learn that the food in the sheet represented all types of people, Jew and Gentile and that he could no longer isolate himself from the Gentiles. He had yet to learn that God cleanses all who come to him through Christ. Peter's doubts explained. In chapter 10, verse 18 to 33, Peter puzzled over the meaning of the vision. The messengers from Cornelius arrived. The Spirit of God advised him to go with them without hesitation, for they had in fact been sent by God himself. Having heard from the men of the mission he was asked to accomplish, he invited them in and gave them a night's lodging. By morning, Peter was beginning to understand the significance of the vision. He set out with six brethren from Joppa, Arriving at Caesarea the next day, in the centre of Gentile dominion, Peter found the centurion, along with his close friends and relatives, waiting for him. In his position, Cornelius fell at Peter's feet in deep reverence and humility. However, Peter quickly raised him to his feet, telling him that he was also a man like anyone else. Peter was breaking the tradition he once held. Here was a complete breakdown of Jewish Gentile barriers. Inside the house, Peter found a large assembly gathered. He explained to the people that although it was not normally lawful for a Jew to even visit a foreigner, God had shown him that he was not to call any common or unclean. See Acts 10 verse 28. Peter then asked Cornelius why he had called for him. In reply, Cornelius related the incident of his vision, saying, Now thereby we are all here present before God. Hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Verse 33. The Faith Peter Taught in Acts 10, verse 34 to 43. It is important that we note what Peter said. The turning point in the Acts of the Apostles had come. Peter pointed out, 34 to 35, God is no respecter of persons. He welcomes from every nation all those who fear him and work righteousness, i.e. Cornelius. See verse 34 to 35 and compare it with Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. Verses 36 to 38. Both the people of Israel and Cornelius knew of the good news of peace in Jesus Christ and of the fact that God anointed him with his Holy Spirit, how he had walked the land of Palestine doing good. Verses 39 to 41, the apostles were witnesses of this one whom the Jews slew. God raised Jesus from the dead. He then showed himself openly to the apostles, the witnesses chosen beforehand of God. Their words were therefore reliable. 
In verse 42, God commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that Jesus is the one ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Unmistakable sign. Acts 10 verses 44 to 48. Before Peter had finished speaking, God intervenes by showing with a sign his approval of the group of Gentile converts. The Jews present were astonished that the Holy Spirit was poured out on these Gentiles, just as it had been on the apostles on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 11 verse 15 and Acts chapter 2 verse 4. Here were uncircumcised, unbaptized men praising the God of Israel with the gift of tongues. Turning to the six Jewish brethren who accompanied him from Joppa, Peter said, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? It was clear to all that these Gentiles believed in Jesus Christ and were approved of God. Acts 11 verses 16 to 17 Peter then commanded them all to be baptised in the name of the Lord. Principle for living God is not a respecter of persons. The incident shows that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek. Galatians 3 verse 28 For Christ had begun to break down the hatred between Jew and Gentile, his gospel being one of peace and fellowship for both. Those who were strangers and foreigners were now fellow citizens with the saints. Ephesians 2 verse 12 to 19 Both Jew and Gentile could now obtain the repentance which leads to life, for in Abraham's seed would all nations be blessed. Of all that God would choose, all men and women, irrespective of background, should be well understood by us. Paul says that nationality, bonds and gender are all irrelevant in terms of finding acceptance with God. Galatians 3.28 Our past life is also irrelevant. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9 to 11. The only issue is whether we are people who, in a spirit of meekness, will accept and believe the message of salvation and submit our lives to God. Summary and lesson for us. The events of Cornelius' baptism clearly indicated that God fully intended to call Gentiles to the hope of life. Jewish and Gentile believers were to become all one in Christ Jesus. This calling, which began with Cornelius, still continues today with the same conditions. Still applying now as then, and in this there are lessons for our eternal benefit. God will not accept us just because we do good deeds. He requires belief and baptism of us as he did of Cornelius. Believing the gospel is essential to please God. The gospel was given to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Romans 1 verse 16 to 17. First to remember. Acts 10 verse 34 to 35. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. These lessons are the words taken from the Christadelphian Sunday School Association notes www.cssa.asn.au used with permission. Email your questions to readthebible2 at gmail.com
and we look forward to you listening to the next lesson, which will be called Peter Escapes from Prison. <laughs>